this woman came up and just broke down in tears and just she just freaked out because she didn't even know her house was on fire and it was burned completely to the ground, everything gone. When we hit the boulevard, the water was starting to rise. It was maybe two feet there. So we said we could make it. The rush of water came and it from two and a half feet, it went up to four feet, four and a half feet. My grandkids made it across to the house. My wife and I, we couldn't do it. For my wife, I thought well, we were going to lose her. I thought well, I was going to lose my grandkids. The water was up to the top of the stairs. I saw the transformers exploding by 116th Street. I didn't think we were going to make it. I really didn't. I thought we were going to all die. The water just started coming through uh, our bedroom windows and the lobby doors here, and then it wasn't fun anymore. It's time to start climbing to the higher floors. So you see, like all the sand is also in our apartment, in the stairways, all over. We need gasoline, we need people here to help clean up, we need food. People are asking for pillows and candles and batteries and ice. There is a great need for manpower. Lots of dirt that needs to be shoveled, lots of drywall that needs to be pulled up. We need people. Now the Dream Center's here, knocking on doors, looking for people who have signs out saying no gas, need gas for generators, and we're just putting gas in as many of them as we can. They haven't been back here in eight days. Just so happens the day we're there that they showed up. Words can't express their gratitude. I mean, tears in their eyes just telling us, praise God, praise God, thank you, thank you, thank you. The response has been tremendous. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of volunteers, firefighters, FEMA workers, church members, uh, nonprofit organizations have just rallied around the community. It was one of the most unbelievable acts with the passion I've ever witnessed. He's helping to help my basement. He's helping take down sheetrock. He's getting rid of debris for us. I thank you so much. You can't live here. It's too cold, you can't see anything at night, and it's dangerous. It's getting scary. It's to the point of everyone saying, you gotta run, but we don't know where to run to. So many people, even though the debris will be gone, the water will be cleared out, and the sand will be removed, they won't have a home to go back to. And so we really need to address the issue of transitional housing. We're really going to step out in faith here. We're going to believe God that through this time that we're going to be able to meet some of this need, that we're going to be able to take people in, give them the housing they need, give them that transitional peace that they need to get them on to the next stage of their life. 